All right, let's look at Revelation chapter 4. All right, now we got the sea of glass, but the second part of verse 6, four beasts full of eyes before and behind, whoever they are. But look at these four beasts at verse 7. And the first beast was like a lion, the second beast like a calf, third beast had a face as a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. Well, that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? <laughs> so, it, things just get a little bit more weird now. So now we got a lion, face of a lion, we got the face of a man, we got the face of an eagle, and then the face of a calf as well. Now, look at your amazing book. Go to Ezekiel chapter 1. Ezekiel 1 is the chapter where you want to know where it answers your question about Genesis 1 and Revelation 4. It's Ezekiel 1 that holds all the answers over here. All right, look at Ezekiel chapter 1. Look at verse... 5. Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 5. Also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures. Oh, remember these guys? Hi. Right. And this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. And everyone had four faces. And everyone had four wings. And their feet were straight feet. And the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot. And they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. And they had the hands of a man under their wings on their four sides. And they four had their faces and their wings. Their wings were joined one to another. They turned not when they went. They went every one straight forward. As for the likeness of their faces, they four had the face of a... Now look how this matches with your whiteboard here. They four had the face of a man and the face of a lion on the right side. And they four had the face of an ox on the left side. And they four also had the face of an eagle. Notice there is your answer right there. But notice this is no doubt the same four creatures who are surrounding this throne up in heaven, which is above the firmament. Because keep reading. You'll notice that the Bible says at verse 22, And the likeness of the what? Firmament upon the what? Heads of the living creature was as the color of the terrible what? Crystal stretched forth what? Over their heads above. Dun, da, da, dun. This makes sense. See that? <laughs> this is the sea of glass right here. Notice it says what? Above the what? Firmament. Yeah. Oh, scripture with scripture Amen. makes it more enlightening. Amen. It's an amazing book you got over here. Amen. Let's keep reading right here. Notice, and under the firmament were their wings straight, the one toward the other. Everyone had two which covered on this side. Everyone had two which covered on that side their bodies. Uh, let's see, verse 25. And there was a voice from the what? Firmament that was over their heads. Remember, John, he said he heard a voice. Uh, there was a voice. Oh, I wrote it down there. Voices out of the throne. Ezekiel's down here and he says somewhere up there there's a voice coming out. There is no doubt. This is the same thing. And above the firmament, verse 26, that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne as the appearance of a sapphire stone. And upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness as the appearance of a man upon it. Oh, there is no doubt. There is no doubt. That's referring to the same one. But look at verse 28. As the appearance of the what? Bow that is in the cloud. Wait, that matches with Revelation 4, right? Which we read earlier. Chapter 4, was it verse 3? Let's take a look at that one. Yeah, chapter 4, verse 3. There's a rainbow round about that throne. I told you so. Look at right here, man. Wow, that's something. See, there is no doubt. Are you convinced by now this is the same thing? Yeah, this is undoubtedly the same thing. So Ezekiel saw the same thing. Now let's study these four creatures, which is going to be interesting right here. Notice that these match up over here, but 
look back at Ezekiel chapter 1 and then compare that with Revelation 4. Here is one of the so-called contradictions in your King James Bible. Some atheists are going to use Revelation 4 and Ezekiel 1 to show a contradiction. Okay? Let's take a look at this and cover this. So let's start off with Revelation chapter 4 and verse 8. And the four beasts had each of them how many wings? Six wings about him. Okay. So each of these cherubims have six wings here, all right? Now look at Ezekiel, however. Look at Ezekiel 1. Keep your hand there. We're going to look at the contradictions, okay? If you're an atheist, you definitely want to bookmark this so you can find contradictions in your King James Bible. Let's look at Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 11. Thus were their faces, and their wings were stretched upward, Two wings of every one were joined one to another, and two covered their bodies. You'll notice right here at verse 6, and everyone had four faces, and everyone had four wings, not six. Ah, there's an error in your King James Bible. So notice Ezekiel chapter 1, let's compare this. Ezekiel 1 says four wings. And here's another contradiction, four faces. If you look at Revelation, notice that it's, he doesn't mention four faces. He said the face of a lion, face of an eagle, man, calf. But then Ezekiel said, no, four faces which composed of this. So there seems to be a contradiction. Not only that, Revelation has six. You count six here? Unless I'm a really bad artist, then yeah, then you see four. But this is six, right? Right over here is four wings. Where's the answer to that? The answer to that is very simple. One, John, he was looking at one side of their faces. Because you'll notice right here that verse 10, as for the likeness of their faces, they four had the face of a man and the face of a lion on the right side. And they four had the face of an ox on the left side. They four also had the face of an eagle. Thus were their faces, and their wings were stretched upward. Two wings of every one were joined, one to another, and two covered their bodies. And they went, every one straight forward, whither the Spirit it was to go. They went, and they turned not when they went. So you'll notice right here that with their four faces, it was like two, two, and two, two here. See, one on the right, one on the left like this. So John, he was only looking at one of the side of their four faces. Obviously, each face had to have its own side right there. Yeah. See? So that's the reason why John saw one of the faces. But here's another thing. If you read that passage at verse 11, so here are the four wings, right? But look at the two. Two wings of every one were what? joined one to another, and then what? Two covered their bodies. Ah, there you go. See that? So that's why these two were joined. These two were joined. Here's a separate one. What did John see? John saw all six. What did Ezekiel saw? Ezekiel, he saw six too, but he put it as four because these were combined and considered as one. There you go. There's your answer to your King James Bible. It's amazing when you take the word as it says. If you literally read it, read it as it says, two wings joined one to another, you got your answer right there. All righty. Now, let's keep your hand here at Ezekiel 1 and go to Ezekiel 10. This is interesting. Ezekiel chapter 10. Now, remember, ox, lion, eagle, man, correct? All right, now look at this. Ezekiel chapter 10. Notice what the Bible says concerning about these four cherubims again. Verse 14. Everyone had four faces, the same cherubims. The first face was the face of an ox, and the face, second face was the face of a man, the third the face of a lion, and the fourth the face of an eagle. Did I read something wrong here? It said what? Cherub, not ox. It said cherub. 
guess what? Oh my, oh no way right here. You see this right here? So you'll notice here, let me put a black marker. God considers the ox as the same word as a cherub who is called literally cherub. Look at Ezekiel 28. Ezekiel chapter 28. Look at Ezekiel 28. Who is called cherub? Yeah, come on. Ezekiel chapter 28. Notice what the Bible says right here concerning about the old friend of the family. <laughs> verse 14. Uh, let's look at verse 13. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Okay, that's Satan. Look at verse 14. Thou art the anointed what? Cherub. Cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Ooh, look at that. So we notice right here that Satan is known as the ox right here. Yeah. Now, this is very interesting. We're at Revelation chapter 4, right? Yeah. Revelation 4 mentioned four cherubs right here. These were not fallen. They're surrounding the throne. They're holy. They're, they're not at a fallen state. But you'll notice that there had to be a cherub that was at a fallen state. What does that mean then? That means there were originally five, not four. Well, I don't believe that because you got four surrounding the throne. Oh, did you read Ezekiel 28? Read it. Thou art the anointed cherub that what? Covereth. And I have set thee so. He was a covering. There is an opening right here. The top. He's surrounded on all four sides, but you just need to put a covering, a lid on top. No wonder he thought he could be higher than God. Isn't it amazing, the book that you're reading in your hand? Oh, look at me. I'm on top. And God's like, yeah, that ain't happening again. Boom. All right, you four stay over there. Oh, can I take Lucifer's position, please? No, 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 no. You stay around here. Stay around here. All right? <laughs> so you'll notice right here, Lucifer used to be a covering right here. But then he went down. Yeah. Kind of interesting. Kind of looks like a UFO, right, over there? I'm just throwing it out there. Just throwing it out there. Okay. I'm not saying anything. Let's look at the book at easy... Let's look back over here at the book of Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4. So there were five cherubs. Here's another interesting thing as we close it off right here. So then that means if we were going to cover these uh, five cherubims, you'll notice they cover all classes of creation. So you'll notice right here it covers the wild animals, lions. It covers the domestic animals, calf. It covers the humans, man, and then it covers birds. There is, one there is a missing class of creature right here, and what you're going to notice is it is aquatic reptilian. Wait, doesn't that kind of sound similar with the UFO alien conspiracies that you hear? Aquatic reptilian, or as scientists like to call it, amphibians. But scientists, see, they're behind from the Bible. They see it as evolution, where it's closely related with what? Fish, amphibian, reptile. See, they think that there's a close relationship right here because they see so much similarity, scientifically speaking. No, it's not a proof of evolution. It's a proof right here, the similarity of a class God puts them in his creation. Yeah. Aquatic reptilian. Scientists have their own classification system, but the scriptures has its own classification system right here. So you'll notice right here that Lucifer, he covers the aquatic reptilians right here. Well, that, I, I don't believe in that. You're really stretching things. Uh, look at Isaiah 28. <laughs> look at Isaiah 28. People don't read the Bible. You got to look at the Bible, all right? 
Word of God will show you many things. All right, look at Isaiah 27, Isaiah chapter 27, and read verse 1, all right? See if this qualifies as some kind of fish, <coughs> reptile. All right, let's see if this qualifies as some sort of fish, reptile. Isaiah chapter 27, verse 1. In that day the Lord with this sore and great and strong sword shall punish, uh, shall punish who? Leviathan, the piercing serpent, even Leviathan, that crooked serpent, and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. It covered, I told you, it covered those classes of animals. God considers it as one right here. Notice that this is all in reference to the devil right here. See, aquatic reptilian. That ain't no dinosaur. If you think that's a dinosaur, God must have some beef with one dinosaur for some weird reason. <laughs> that day the Lord shall send a sword to punish that poor little dinosaur, you know. So you'll notice right here that that obviously does not make sense. See, creationists don't know what they're talking about. Why is that, Pastor? The, the sad thing concerning about creationists is that they're afraid to study that book. They don't go deep into the Bible. They delve deep into science, but not the Word of God. Bible-believing Christians, we got to delve into the Word of God first. Mm -hmm. Science, yeah, let's delve even further because you'll find more interesting things. Like I told you about this one class of creature, and scientists thought that there was a relationship, that they evolved from each other. No, it's because they were by the same Creator, that's why. And God considered them as one class. See, if you delve deeper into science, it's going to study that book more. Yeah. But when you study science first more, and not the Bible, then you're going to not take the words literally as it says. That's why they cannot believe in a Genesis gap. They cannot believe in this firmament about the waters dividing. They cannot believe in that. Why? They don't want to read the verse as it says right here. But if you read the verse as it says, please, you'd be amazed. And it makes so much more sense why the word exactly says it that way for a particular reason. All right, let's go back. Revelation 4. All right, we had enough fun. Now, now you got the questions answered, right? Oh, man, that didn't make sense. What is this? And then when you look at it, you're like, wow. All right, Revelation chapter 4. It's the book, that's why. Try to find that in your Quran, huh? Some sun sets on a muddy spring. Perhaps if some Muslim works very hard, he can find a deeper meaning for that one. Maybe it's referring to some sort of sea of glass or a muddy glass, excuse me, that divides the heavens or something. Maybe they can find something if they just spend more time on it.